And it seems like the hits to the NSA just keep coming. The New Zealand Sunday Star Times reported that New Zealand's military, with the assistance of U.S. intelligence agencies like the NSA, intercepted the phone metadata from a journalist working for McClatchy. McClatchy is the third largest newspaper chain in the United States. Now, the McClatchy journalist is John Stevenson, who reports from Afghanistan. The Sunday Star Times said the intelligence agencies targeted Stevenson for his reporting on how the Afghan detainees were handled and sought his source for the confidential information. The military allegedly used the metadata from Stevenson's phone to determine who he had called and then who those people had called afterwards. This created a phone tree of the journalist's associates. Here to walk us through this issue and its effects on the press freedom is Craig Aaron, the president and CEO of Free Press. Thank you for being here today, Thanks Craig. for having me. Now, first question. Now, McClatchy, he's written a strongly worded letter to James Clapper, the director of the National Intelligence, uh, regarding this incident. And it says, here we have it, a quote right here, Absent, absent a well-founded good faith belief that a journalist is engaged in terrorist activity, compiling and analyzing a journalist's metadata would violate core First Amendment principles and U.S. law. Now, the Associated Press, they also wrote a strongly worded letter um, to the, the Department of Justice, however, after they found out that one of their journalists was also being spied on. Tell me, do these strongly worded letters do anything? Well, I think they're an important start. I mean, certainly you have to put things on the record. And one thing in being the Associated Press or McClatchy is you do have a megaphone. And so the letter is a way to get that story out there and allow your own reporters to cover what's happening to your company. That said, these are serious, serious allegations. I mean, Stevenson was a reporter who has broken stories about alleged war crimes. So uh, accusing uh, New Zealand soldiers of committing war crimes while in Afghanistan, very serious allegations. The idea that he was being spied on because maybe the New Zealand military doesn't like this story, doesn't want it out there, wants to know who his sources are inside. Very, very serious allegations. Also, McClatchy is a chain that's done very serious and critical reporting on the war on terror for years, going back to the run-up in the war in Iraq. So the notion that we're sort of exporting these attacks on press freedom, that we're using uh, intelligence gathered in a war zone to potentially punish journalists for doing those jobs, doing their jobs, that's a very serious uh, and, and deeply concerning allegation. Indeed it is. Now, can you talk to me about the effects of taking metadata from John Stevenson's phone on the freedom of press? It just seems, like you said, it's sure. a what, what you need to understand about metadata is, it, as, as the Snowden revelations have, I think, shown, mm -hmm. is that it can tell you a lot about, maybe even more, than what recording a conversation could tell you. Because with the metadata, you know where they were standing when they made a call, how long they talked mm -hmm. to, which numbers they called. This can give you a lot of information, really all of the information you need about where somebody was and who they were trying to talk to. So by reconstructing this, uh, you, you, you're able to figure out you know, who this journalist is calling and, and who's calling him. That's a lot of information on how they're doing their jobs. And when you're talking about journalists, you know, that's how they do their jobs and in, in who they call, who they use the phone to talk to. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's everything. Now, the reason for collecting John Stevenson's metadata in the first place, the government says it was because that he did this report on the mistreatment of Afghan detainees. And they said that was a justifiable reason because he was talking to potential terrorists. In your opinion, what is a justifiable reason for taking the press? Uh, you know, I think a just the only justifiable reason would be clear evidence that someone was actually involved in terrorist or criminal activity. So if the journalists themselves, they had reason to believe was doing something to break the law or to plan an attack, certainly in cases like that you could see going after metadata. But the idea that a government would go after the phone records of a journalist simply because they don't like the stories they're doing, that, that's a real big problem. It does. It is a big problem. Now we're learning that, you know, there's all these different government branches that are surveilling us and journalists. Has has this been going on for a long time and we're now just making noise about it? I mean, I think the, the question is we don't really know. You know, we know that the Associated Press here in Washington, D.C. figured out that the government had gone in and done a broad sweep of their phone records. Uh, we know that they've gone after a journalist at Fox News for the records of him going in and out of the State Department. Mm -hmm. You know, in this case, we don't know as much. This was a war zone. There's obviously a lot of communications and intelligence being swept up. Uh, we don't know exactly how this 
New Zealand instance was carried out. But I think we have real reasons to question whether this administration and whether the military is protecting press freedom. These are constitutionally protected activities. And the idea that the government mm -hmm. would be going in with no knowledge to these companies, no knowledge to the journalists that are affected, and spying on them, that should have very, very serious concerns. Because uh, as a citizen, we don't have any other eyes or ears in a war zone. We have no other way to get information about what the government's doing. And so the idea that they're going out of their way to try to piece together who's talking to these journalists, that has an incredible chilling effect on any journalist's ability to hold a national security state or the military accountable. It sure does. Now, what do you see as a just resolution to this situation? Well, transparency. I think that we really need, as the McClatchy letter suggests, we need the director of national intelligence to come clean. Now, we're getting to have a very long list of the things we need the director of national intelligence to come clean about. But, but this certainly should be right up there. What did the U.S. do? Why was this intelligence collected? Who was it shared with? And under what auspices? I think we need answers to those questions so we can know what was really going on here. Now, you say transparency. That would be a just resolution. What do you actually think the resolution will be in real life? Well, I mean, so far, I think there's been a lot of dodging and evading when it comes to these questions of press freedom. I mean, the Justice Department here in the United States did make an effort to change its rules and regulations on how it approaches the press. We need to see if that's really going to happen in practice. And so far, the indications aren't very good. There is some movement when things get exposed. But what we keep finding out almost every week is there it goes deeper and deeper and deeper. And we don't really know what the government's doing. I think that's why the public needs to get involved and be answering these questions, holding its political leaders accountable, because we need a, pr a free press if we're going to have a functioning democracy. Craig, thank you for your insight. We appreciate having you here today and what you have to tell us. That was Craig Aaron, president and CEO of Free Press.